Does foam rolling really work? Let me tell you what science really says about foam rolling. Get up and get down, get up and get down. Let's start by talking about what foam rolling really does. First, it does improve flexibility for most people, but it's only short term. So if he's gonna foam roll his ankles for about a minute, he's probably gonna see an improved flexibility of his calf muscles with dorsiflexion. But here's the deal. Research shows that the improvements in flexibility usually only last about 10 to 30 minutes. So for some people, this can be a helpful idea if you have stiff ankles to do prior to working out. It's also going to help improve circulation and decrease DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. So for some people who may be really sore after a workout, something like this can help decrease soreness and enhance recovery. All right, let's talk about what this does not do. Now, first, this is not a long-term change, right? We are not actively increasing the length of the muscle tissue. So what I want you to think about is this is opening up a door for some short-term movement, improving the neuromuscular coordination, improving the circulation, but it is not gonna physically change the length of the muscle, right? That's not gonna happen. The other thing is this is not going to decrease your athletic performance. If anything, it's gonna let you use your body better. It's gonna be then when your muscles work better, that's better force production, more strength, more overall mobility. And that's a big thing. Now, this is a fear people have where they think if I foam roll, I'm gonna get weak, I'm gonna have muscle inhibition. That's not gonna happen. What's gonna actually decrease your muscle and your athletic force production is when your muscles don't work and you're compensating, and you're stiff and you're tight. That's what you should worry about not some short-term changes from foam rolling and mobility. So remember, this is short-term change. So let's talk about some practical applications. First and foremost, you do not need to spend a lot of time foam rolling. Each body part that you do foam roll only spend about a minute there. Any longer and you're just wasting time. Second, you don't have to foam roll. If you don't have time before a workout, just spend some time doing more of a dynamic warm up, moving, getting some blood flowing, and you'll improve your flexibility too. You don't have to foam roll before your workout. If you like the way your body feels after, for sure you can do it. But for most people, if you don't have time, just maybe do your foam rolling later at night to help your body down regulate, enhance your recovery. And for me, I feel like I sleep a little bit better when I do a little bit of foam rolling later at night. So the biggest thing is we do not want to waste time foam rolling. If you feel like it helps you move a little bit better after, there's not a problem with adding it in before your workout, but keep it short. Now, it's important to remember that you can waste a lot of time on this. There are people who go to the gym, they spend 20, 30 minutes to become foam rolling kings, mobility warriors, and they're not making any real improvements. And they're actually wasting time because they're not actually training. So spend a minute in each area, don't spend more than a few minutes, and just do what the, you get to pass the point of diminishing returns if you waste too much time. So the other thing is you don't have to do this every single time. When combined with effective training that's actually improving your overall body and mobility, you should be able to move past this in large part, and you can return to this as needed for spot fixes or for mobility treatments, but you don't have to do this every time. It's not gonna negatively affect you. Your whole workout's not gonna be ruined, but just like you forgot your favorite pre-workout, it's gonna be okay. Use this as a tool. Big thing to remember, chase discomfort, not pain. More pain is not necessarily better. So you don't have to have the hardest foam roller. You don't have to smash a barbell into your thigh to make it work. For some people, you may actually need to go a little bit softer. Find something that's discomforting within the tissues, but not creating excruciating pain. And you're actually probably gonna see some good progress with this. All right, guys, that's it for today's video on foam rolling and what science actually has to say. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please like, comment, share this video with all your friends that need to know about foam rolling, and be sure to head over and check out Graham's YouTube. I'll have it linked below. Give him a subscribe because he's got a lot of good information as well. Until next time, guys, happy foam rolling. <laughs> <laughs> they say that energy flows where attention goes so i pay no mind why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos these people have